Okay, this lecture is on a nodal analysis of an op amp network, or really any circuit network that contains an operational amplifier. And when you analyze circuits with op amps, I highly recommend using a nodal analysis. We're gonna follow a standard nodal analysis that we have been using uh, for these circuits. And here's a, a list of the procedures that we, we need to follow for a, a correct nodal analysis. Except when we have an operational amplifier in our circuit, there are three extra things that we need to do. Two of these are what we call op amp constraints. That is, after we have uh, identified our nodes in the network and our reference node labeled our nodes, um, we're going to apply what we call op amp constraints. The first thing is we're going to label our input currents of the op amp are going into the input terminals of the operational amplifier uh, to have zero amps in. Okay, That's necessary because we're assuming a virtual um, open circuit across the input terminals. We also have the constraint that we have a zero voltage differential across the input terminals of the op amp. And we should label that because we have a virtual short circuit across the input terminals as well. So this virtual open circuit, we're going to label as both zero amps in both terminals, zero volts across. The consequence of having a zero voltage difference between the, the uh, uh, positive and negative terminals is that these two voltages are the same. It does not mean these two pins are, this, are tied to the same node, but it means they have the same, they share the same voltage. So therefore I can set VP equal to VN, for example, or VN equal to VP, but they have the same voltage. So that actually removes one degree of freedom, as we'll find out when we are solving our equations. Then after we do our normal voltage constraints, um, we'll be left with a, a set of unknown, uh, still about M unknowns, for which we're going to have to apply KCL. So when we have an op amp, we have to understand where we can and cannot apply KCL. Of course, as normal, we cannot apply KCL uh, at any node directly connected to a reference node uh, that is directly connected. Uh, we have to remember that. Of course, not containing a voltage source. And we cannot perform KCL about the output terminal of a, um, an op amp. Why? Because an op amp will have an output voltage of V0 determined by the surrounding uh, uh, feed circuit with feedback, what we call the closed the close loop gain of the op amp. It will force a voltage of V there, V0 there, and that voltage will be V0 independent of the load, which means that if I have, I will be pulling or drawing current out of the op amp uh, to maintain that voltage of V0. I cannot predict that. So therefore, we cannot uh, perform a KCL about the out output terminal of an op amp. So we should treat the output terminal of an op amp like a voltage source. Okay. After that, we, we, we we realize we can perform KCL at the input terminals provided that they're not connected to a reference node or directly connected to a voltage source. Um, also realizing that even though they're the same potential, I have two possible KCL nodes. Okay, once we have our, our, our total of n equations, uh, we can solve for n unknowns uh, and solve for the various node voltages in the network. Okay, so the best way to, to illustrate this is through a couple of examples. This is the first example I have, which are two cascaded op amp networks. Uh, they're really two inverting amplifiers cascaded, but I have a separate feedback resistance from the output of the cascaded network back to the input of this network. But what we want to do is we want to find V0, the output voltage, as a function of Vs, and of course these uh, resistor values in the network. Okay, so we're gonna do our normal nodal analysis. The first thing we'll do is identify the nodes in our network. Okay, so we have various nodes. Uh, of course, at my input, I'm gonna have a voltage constraint. So I've already labeled this as Vs, as my source voltage. I identify, I have a node here, I'm gonna call it Va. I have a node at the output, I'll call that V01 or V output one. I have a node here, Vb, and I have another node here, V out, uh, which is the output of op amp two. And I also have my reference nodes, uh, which I've labeled at zero volts. Right. 
So at this point, I see I have a total of one, two, three, four unknowns in my problem. Except I have not yet applied my op-amp voltage, uh, op-amp constraints, which I will next do. So apply my op-amp constraints, I'm going to label my input currents as zero amps on both op-amps, and I have a zero differential voltage across here. Ah, since I have zero differential volts, my op-amp constraint says, well, VA minus zero must be equal to zero volts. Therefore, I can replace VA with zero volts. All right. So this eliminates one more degree of freedom by applying my op-amp constraint across the, across the voltage terminals of op-amp one. We'll do the same thing for op-amp two, recognizing that I have a zero volt difference here, then VB minus zero, because I have zero volts below equals zero, so therefore VB is equal to zero volts. All right. So now, applying my op-amp constraints, I see that the inverting pins, or the negative pins of the op-amps, are at zero volts. We have to remember these are not connected to reference node, but they are constrained to zero volts because of the op-amp. That's very important to understand. You know, we know with applying our op-amp constraints, we realize I now have two unknowns, V01 and V0. Okay, these are the two unknowns, so I need two KCL equations. So the question is, where can I apply my KCL? Of course, I can't apply it at VS because it's connected to a voltage source. I can't apply it at the positive terminals because they're connected to reference. They're directly connected to reference, therefore I cannot apply KCL there. But I can apply KCL across the input terminal, or the, the inverting terminal of op amp one. Okay, so that is one uh, KCL equation I can write but I cannot write KCL equation across the output terminal. Why? Because I have to treat that as a voltage source. But I can write KCL at the input terminal of uh, op-amp two, but I cannot write it at the output terminal of op-amp two because I treat that as a voltage source. However, I still have two KCL equations for my two unknowns, V01 and V0. So I can be ready to solve by writing down these two KCL equations. So let's treat the, the um, negative terminal or the inverting terminal of op amp one first. And I can write down my KCL equations. I have zero volts minus Vs divided by Rs1 plus zero volts minus V0 divided by Rf3 plus zero volts minus V01 divided by Rf1 plus zero amps into the op amp equals zero. Okay. So this gives me what my first equation. Next, I can write KCL at the inverting or negative terminal of op amp two. So I have zero volts minus V01 over RS2, plus zero volts minus V0 over RF1, plus zero amps equals to zero. Now this equation here, in the second equation, I realize I can get a relate, direct relationship between V01 and V0. In fact, uh, by moving V0 over to the right-hand side, that's multiplying both sides by RS2, I see that V01 is equal to minus RS2 over RF2 times V0. So again, this is just a, an inverting amplifier where um, it's taking the output of op amp one, which is V0, V01, and it's amplifying it by minus RF over RS2 of op amp two. That gives me my output, um, V0, but here I have the reciprocal of that ratio uh, expressed. Okay, but now I can plug this in for V01 and op amp one. And having uh, doing that, then basically I see I have the V0 on both sides, and I bring this term over to the left. So I can write that as a, and I'm multiplying the whole thing by RF3. And then therefore I can finally solve for V0 to be equal to. Uh, minus one over uh, minus RF three over RS times VS times the quotient, which would be one minus RF three over RF one RS two over RF three on the denominator. So this would give me my final output uh, for the op amp, and this would be the output for the op amp, providing that V zero, the magnitude is V zero, is less than the biasing voltage or the BCC voltage of both of these op amps. Okay, so that's example one. Uh, let's get a little bit harder an example. Call this example number two. 
And again, this example involves two op-amp networks. And we want to use, again, nodal analysis to solve these, uh, this, this op-amp uh, network. And we're going to solve for V0 as a function of Vs and all the intermediate resistor values. OK, so we're going to apply our nodal analysis. So the first thing we do is identify our nodes. We have a, these two nodes are connected to reference. I'll label those as zero volts. Uh, I'll apply a voltage constraint here at my source uh, voltage, such as Vs, which just assumes we connected to a voltage source, uh, Vs volts. I have a node here, Va, at the uh, positive or non-inverting input of uh, the first stop band. Now, this pin here is not connected to ground, uh, so I'm going to call this Vb. The output, I'll call that Vc. The input node of uh, the non-inverting node of op amp 2 I'll call that VD, and the inverting node or pin, I'm going to call it VE. Again, it is not connected to reference. And finally, my output. So I have a total of one, two, three, four, five, six unknowns in this problem, or six non-reference nodes not connected to voltage source. Okay. All right. Now, the next step is, of course, we've applied the voltage constraint, but now I need to do my op amp constraints. So I'm going to label my input currents as zero and my differential voltage across the input as zero volts. So zero volt amps in, zero volts across. Based on this op amp constraint, then VA minus v, VB must be equal to zero. Therefore, VA must be equal to VB. So I'm going to write OR. I'm going to replace VB with VA. I'm going to do that the same thing on the second op amp, or VD minus VE is zero. Therefore, VE equals to VD. So I'm just going to go ahead and replace these two node labels with VA, VA across the input pins of op amp one, and VD on both pins of op amp two. Okay. So now let's count our unknowns. I have one VA, two VC, three VD, four V zero. I have four unknowns, so I need four KCL equations to solve this problem. So the next question is where can I apply KCL? Well, of course, I can't apply it across the source pin, uh, but I can apply it at VA. So I can apply KCL at this node. Let's go ahead and do that. So here I have that VA minus VS over R1 plus zero amps equals to zero. Okay. So this is KCL at, at that first pin. What I see here is I have a direct relationship between VA and VS. In fact, I see if I multiply the whole equation by R1, I see that VA equals to VS. So this VA here is just nothing more than the source voltage. It's nothing more than to be equal to the source voltage. Okay. And that really because there's no voltage drop across R1. Why? Because I have zero amps flowing through it. So that's really uh, something we could have done by inspection. All right, next we can apply KCL across the um, negative or inverting uh, terminal of the op amp. Now let's go ahead and do that. So we have that VA minus VD over R5 plus VA minus zero over R2 plus VA minus VC over R3 plus zero amps all sums to zero. Okay. Now I can replace VA with VS, which I have uh, concluded from the previous uh, equation. And I can solve, write an equation for VD and VC as a function of VS. Okay, so here I put VD and VC over the right hand side. And I have VD over R5 plus VC over R3 equals VA times one over R5 plus one over R2, but VA is equal to VS. And then I'll also add in the one over R3 term. Okay. All right, so I have two equations for my four nodes. I need two more equations. The question is, where can I apply my KCL? So can, do I, I ask, can I apply it at VC and the output of op amp one? And the answer to that is no. Why? Because I have to treat the output of an op amp like a voltage source. Well, therefore, I have the similar thing. I cannot apply it at the output of op amp two as well. Well, this, I just have two nodes left, and the question is, can I apply KCL on either of these nodes? And the answer is yes. I can apply KCL at node D uh, positive or node D and node D negative, and that would give me my final two equations. So let's go ahead and 
apply it first at the non-inverting terminal. And again, well, this is trivial because I have VD minus VC over R4 plus zero amps equals to zero, so therefore VD must be equal to VC. Why? Because there's no current flowing through R4, there's no voltage drop, therefore these are at the same potential. What's interesting is down here, I have VD plus over R5 plus VC over R3, but now I see that these are equal. Um, so I can take advantage of that and basically say, okay, let's fact, let's just set VC equal to VD, factor out the VD, okay? So we have a relationship between VD and VS, and that's gonna be useful. And finally, if I apply my last KCL equation at the um, inverting terminal of op amp two or the negative terminal, I can write that VD minus VS, since VA is equal to VS, over R5, plus zero amps into the op amp, plus VD minus zero over R6, plus VD minus V0 over R7, must sum to zero. So this gives me my last equation. Um, and what I see here is I can write this equation, I can pull V0 over R7 on the right hand side, the left expression as a function of VD and VS. I can factor out of VD, it's one over R5 plus one over R6 plus one over R7 minus VS over R5. And then finally, uh, from the second equation, I see I can solve for VD as a function of VS. And finally, I combine these two equations together and I can finally solve for V0 as a function of VS by multiplying uh, both sides of this equation by R7 and replacing VD with this by dividing by one of our five plus one of our three on both sides of this equation and plugging that in for VD. And finally, you get this output voltage uh, for this cascaded network. Okay, um, so this concludes this uh, tutorial on applying a nodal analysis to solving circuit networks with operational amplifiers. Again, if we follow. Uh, if we follow these equations uh, of the of the um, these equa equa of the I'm sorry, if we follow the procedure for a proper nodal analysis, where what we do is we add in the additional constraints, the op amp constraints first, which says I have zero amps flowing into the op amp, and I have zero voltage across the terminals that are difference voltage between the two terminals, therefore the inverting and non-inverting terminals are held to the same potential, okay? So therefore I can set VP, for example, equal to VN or VN equal to VP. And the second thing is when we're writing a KCL, we realize we cannot write KCL at the output pin. We have to treat that as a voltage source. Why? Because it's gonna force this to be V0, which is a closed loop gain times the, um, um, times the input voltage to the op amp, okay? And that concludes our tutorial then on uh, op amps using nodal analysis.